this is Enthusiastic Steve and today I'm taking a look at the CB Citizen Band and Breaker magazines from 1981. It was way back in the late 70s, early 80s that I got first got involved with uh, CB Radio and I started buying the old magazines to see what the trends were, what was happening and the fight in the UK to try and make UK FM illegal. There were a generation of youngsters, well not just youngsters, but a generation that had been brought up on the films such as Convoy, Smoking the Bandit, and we were all keen to get our hands on these things called CB radios, stick a big twig on our cars and drive round. Don't forget, this was before mobile phones became a thing, so to have some, any form of communications in your car was amazing. So let's uh, start by taking a look in the CB Citizens Band magazine. There was quite a collection of kit in that dustbin. Anybody recognise any of it? It's no coincidence I picked this magazine first because on first turn of the page, there's an advert for a half-wave antenna, the Alcom. This is my first home base antenna. Half-wave, it worked a treat. It was on my rooftop strapped to the chimney and as in the days when I used to go up the ladder myself and climb up the tiles, strap it to the chimney breast. And uh, this was on top of an old terraced house in Gosport. And uh, it, it got out for miles. A fantastic little antenna. On the right hand page, you can see the uh, radio controlled aircraft. There were big concerns because the proposed 27 megahertz was also shared with uh, a hobbyist who used to fly remote control planes. And there's also uh, indoor telephones. They were called as phones were coming out. And at the bottom there, I think you'll find that's a lovely little Lafayette's uh, rig. Who's got one of those amongst you? Now, here's a familiar name and still going strong today. Well done. It's Knights, the CB Specialist. This is their advert back in the 1981. You could actually get a converter to convert your 40 channel rig to 80. There's some uh, low love little books at the time and a nice little frequency counter there as well. Who recalls SSE down there in Dorking? Again, uh, a provider of CB radios. A lot of the truck drivers were now getting them. And uh, of course, anybody with a car was also seeking these things out. It was about this time that cordless telephones were becoming the popular thing to have in, in your home. And... Uh, they worked on uh, round about 1.6 megs, I believe. Uh, they were analog, and people with scanners could easily eavesdrop on the, the conversations from these little low-power devices. If you had a good outside antenna, you could probably pick these up for a good mile away. Um, it was surprising. But uh, people continued to have them. Uh, I had one myself. And eventually, of course, they become digitized and changed frequencies and... Uh, they, they just disappeared. Why ever happened to all the cordless telephones? And shortly after the, uh, the boom in the, these uh, indoor cordless telephones, who remembers Rabbit Communications here in the UK? It was kind of the interim between uh, mobile phones coming out and cordless telephone technology. They were trying to extend the range of cordless phones. So what they decided to do in uh, urban areas uh, where there were shops and houses... They started putting up these like relay transmitters where you could literally take your cordless handset uh, with you when you left your house, walk down to the shops and still continue to have a conversation. These antennas were like line of sight, very short range, and they appeared on lots of buildings. They did trials around the UK. But uh, as you can see, there were limitations with that. You couldn't go driving in a car too far because you just lose transmissions uh, they were literally line of sight local transmissions to allow you to use the cordless phone but unfortunately rabbit communications didn't last too long um, and again it was another one of those good ideas but unfortunately technology moved on advanced and we got mobile phones and they become extinct come on hands up who never had one of these a multi-band radio could pick up CB radio as well. Well, it could tune to AM signals at the time. Um, everybody had one. I've still got one. He's in a shed. I've got one brand new in a box. Um, they're not brilliant, but they, you know, they're purely analog. You could pick up aircraft. You could pick up the police at the time on them. Yeah, very good for what they were. Very cheap. 
Oh, uh, yes, we were up here calling all CB enthusiasts, wholesale department, look to the public. Uh, Chal Chalmer CB. Uh, we've got over here another directory as well. We've got, uh, what we got in here? We've got, oh, porcupines, smoky. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of information. De 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 Non-definitive explanation of CB jargon. So much CB jargon was coming out. I mean, it added to the effects, but also put a lot of people off. And uh, did you use it here in the UK? We, we, uh, we, we used it a bit, I can remember in the days, but uh, we kept it to the minimum. Another big advert here for the uh, Radio Centre Limited in uh, Harrow, Middlesex. Importers, suppliers, distributors of CB and radio equipment to the trade. And here we go, radio modellers, they, get, they were thought they were going to get a raw deal. They believed they were going to be moved off. A lot of people had 27 megahertz equipment to operate their remote control planes and they could see them just ditching it in the bin. They did get a new allocation which was slightly better than the 27 megs, so they didn't lose out. Right, two things to note here. Some lovely QSL cards. Anybody here? Anybody still here? Anybody recognise these? These are becoming quite collectible now. If you ever see them go up for sale, I'd recommend buying them in because they are a antique of tomorrow. They're already 40 odd years old. Now, who had one of these then? Recognise this? The President Adams. Boy, it was a big big radio. Um, I bought one of these off of a, uh, a sea beer. I remember be, meeting up in some shady car park outside of a sports leisure centre. Uh, we pulled up, flashed headlights, we got out of the cars, and he carried this huge great thing wrapped up in a towel. He opened it up, and boy, was it a big radio. Very impressive. I'd love to have one now, but they do command, a, a, command quite a price now. The President Adams. Nice little QSL card there from the Transworld Sidebanders. A nice little setup in a mobile rig. And we've got Tempus here. Tempus is another company. Who recalls any of these companies? I mean, again, anybody here used to work for them? Or any of, the, any of these adverts in these magazines? It'd be interesting to hear from anybody who used to work for these companies. Um, have memories of it yourself or some of the equipment there. Did you go out and buy the keyboard or the, or the calculator? This was all modern state-of-the-art equipment. A double-page advert from Grove House Electronics based in Bogner down in Sussex there on the south coast. Again, VSWR meters or SWR meters, nobody called it VSWR meters then. Power supplies, look, one of those multi-band radios, again. And these, do you remember these retractable telescopic CB antennas? If you didn't want to be seen having a CB in your car, you got a retractable antenna with a, basically, uh, <laughs> some a lot of resistance to make it work on CB channels. And the slide mount, who had a, a sledge, that was the name of them. Al, the impressive K40. I still run a K40 antenna. And if you look back at one of my other videos where we did some mobile antenna test, the K40 still comes out as not only one of the best, but one of the best and is the best antennas out there to buy. Now again, don't forget, CB radios came out before mobile telephones and we never had apps. If you wanted to find out about CB radio, you either bought a magazine such as this, go down your local library and hopefully they may have a, may have a book on CB, very unlikely of course, or you go out and purchase a book, purchase a book or a document, teach yourself CB. Okay, teach yourself the language. You could even buy cassettes and tapes to actually teach it. But there you go. Advertise now video today for your VHS and Betamax uh, tapes. What's coming out on there? There's your K40 microphone. Now, I've got a K40 microphone at home, a uh, speech processor. But again, it's trying to wire it to a modern day radio is not that easy. Uh, they, take, they need a power supply to operate the actual uh, capacitor, keep the capacitor charged up inside. But again, at the time, this was the beauty, this is the baby to have. There you go, the title says it all, legislation, now what? So they were basically putting proposals through to make UK FM legal. Uh, in the UK, the government didn't want us using our imported illegal radios, all the AM sets by the tens of thousands that were now in the UK. So they decided to allocate a new uh, allocation higher up the band, which didn't fall into any of the current um, spectrums, band plans that existed across Europe or America, making basically all the radio equipment useless. So they came up with UK FM, higher up the 27 megs band, just stopping short of 28 megs. 
the home office was out there. We had the old uh, detector vans going around, telecom, Busby, as we called them, because they used to have a little bird called Busby in their adverts. And they used to go around checking cars with large antennas and even potentially confiscating equipment because it wasn't legal for use in the UK at that time. On these two pages, we've got the antenna base station, the Alcom half wave, the one I mentioned at the beginning, the one I had on top of my chimney. And I think even now, 40 years later, when I go past that house because I don't live there no more, I think the strapping for the base of this antenna is still wrapped around the chimney pot. I did a fantastic job there. It's never come down, though the antenna is not there, of course, no more. But uh, again, half wave, they were quoting 3dB gain. Uh, and in, in this test, they say, well, actual fact, it outperforms 3 dB. They reckon it works a lot better. So this is one of the rare instances where the manufacturer's claim of gain is actually less than it really was. I had no problems with it. And I've, I found this a very good antenna for a half wave. What else have we got here on this side? CB City. They remember those and their order shot and hands. Fantastic. Northern Communications, of course. And uh, up there in Orpington as well. Look at the phone numbers. Really short little phone numbers. The CB scene. Now, this company must have been doing well to have a double page spread in the magazine. OCT, Open Channel Telecommunications. The number one distributor of citizen band equipment. Well, that's what they, they quoted. That's what they thought. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Who used to use them? Do you remember them in, in Lordship Lane, London? Anybody here go into there and buy equipment? Now, no magazine would be worth a penny without its competition. This one was no different. You could win a complete base station setup. Now, when they say base station setup, don't forget, it hasn't been legalized just yet. So the base station comprised of a antenna, no rubbish here, a good AF, a good antenna, a 13.8 volt power supply, uh, which provided up to five amps, and all the connecting wires and plugs. Uh, no mention of a radio, because like I say, they weren't legal yet. You look back on some of these early scanners and you think, did we really use these? Did we actually ever hear anything on them? Well, yes, we did. They've got a certain, uh, certain look about them, I think. And even now, nostalgia creeps in. I think that would be lovely to own now. Totally impractical. It wouldn't really work at all very well. But um, here again... You know, if you're lucky enough to live where there's a lot of analog traffic down on the, by the seafront, by with marine traffic, or by an airport, these things probably still work fairly well. But uh, just look at these. Look at these. I recall these. These 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 used to come up a lot at radio rallies. They're really cheap. Yeah, more adverts for CB radio suppliers. Now, again, this is even before it was legalised. Yeah, so there was a lot of companies out there. It's a shame so many just disappeared a few years later. The Chelsea CB Centre, Fulham. London was really well covered with CB radio shops. It was one of the main areas for CB at the time in the city. But they were all around the country. Fantastic places. A lot of people have forgotten that back in the uh, early 80s, late 70s, the drive for 27 megs uh, CB radio in this country reached its peak. Up to about 10,000 people or more went to these rallies in Trafalgar Square, all around London. And these were held across other parts of the country as well. There was so much support that the government couldn't refuse to ignore it. And that's why eventually the pressure was put upon the government to give us legal CB radio. Two more companies you may have used, Rolling Stock and Breaker Breaker. On the right here, we've got a lovely rig review of a lovely rig, the Lafayette 1200M. Beautiful radio. You see these come up for sale every now and again, and boy, don't they look good. FM, AM, and sideband. Beautiful radios. If you've got one, think yourself very lucky indeed. Now, are you keeping count? Look, another one of those radios. Again. Anyway, what else have we got here? TVI filters. That was a big thing because a lot of people transmit. It was on AM at the time, not FM. A lot of interference was caused. Uh, the TVs then being analog as well were affected. Hi-fi systems were affected. Um, you could reduce a lot of the TV inf interference by using a TVI filter. A lot of people didn't bother, but the options were there. You could have your channel, your handle and your braking channel printed on there as well. 
different breaking channels, different parts of the country, different clubs tend to use. Not everybody use channel 19, some use channel 14, some use channels anywhere, uh, whatever the local agreement was. Some names again, the K40, the Avanti, Firestick, great names in CB radio. And we've got up here, we've got Gem CB as well, up there in Northampton. Now, for those who like to play around a little bit, who were enthusiastic at the time, uh, like to make things, do little projects, these magazines were a great source. Every now and again, they come up with a, a little project. In this instance, make yourself a DF loop antenna. Track down those CBs, go out with a directional loop and try and track their signals down. And again, it's, it, it's a very basic construction. Gives you some simple principles, explains really about how a loop works with the capacitor in it, available capacitor. You can learn all the time. Absolutely sim simple to make. You can use that and you can make that today from, from uh, just a few bits of uh, items laying around and a few components. So again, these old magazines are worth their weight in gold. Boots, burners, power amplifiers, little pair of slippers, call them what you like amplifiers to connect to your radio, boost that signal from your CB radio out for your antenna or your twig and see how far you can get. They've never been legal, ever, but people still use them and buy them to this day. There's an advert here for them. Produce the ultimate in power, Skipmaster. Now I am really losing count. Look what we can see, another one. These magazines could be quite informative as well. Some people used to skip over the technical bits, but you could learn all about the radio waves, the signals, the baseband, the carrier wave, how it becomes modulated, and what actually comes out of your twig. It was a good way to learn about the hobby, the, the technical aspects of it. And many people did this and then went on to become amateur radio operators later in their life. Towards the back of the magazine, we've got club news, and boy, there were a lot of clubs about. CB clubs, bottle breakers, uh, another name for like pubs, were popping up all over the UK. Here, down on the south coast where I am, just down a few miles down the road at Leon the Solent, uh, right down there on the seafront, there was the Bellevue Hotel, no longer there unfortunately. Every Sunday night we used to meet up down there for a little CB radio chitter chatter, an eyeball, uh, a few drinks, and we used to go out on a fox hunt. No foxes were harmed because a fox hunt was just actually somebody in a car with their CB radio parked up, transmitting every 30 seconds or so, and we'd have to go and find them. They pretended to be a fox, and all the other CBs were fox hunters. Now, here we go, look at this. This is my little badge. Um, get the glare off it there. The BBC, Bottle Breakers Club. And there's my name, Bigfoot, at the bottom. Right, I'm not going to mention it again, but it could be something lurking in the uh, corner here, so we'll ignore that. Um, it's here, the K40 speech processor microphone. Had a little magnet on the back as well, so you could just attach it to a neat metallic. You didn't need to use a, a little microphone hook at all. Um, the CB radio guide there, Skywave from Bournemouth, with your fire sticks and Shakespeare's. And again, another one of the club meets here, people pulling up in their custom cars and their old American police cars with the old antennas on it. You know, it's quite, quite funny, really. Everyone driving around with big six, seven foot long fire stick antennas on the back of there, four Cortina Mark Threes and Mark Twos, and, um, you know, trying to drive past and ignore the police cars. They knew exactly what was going on. And there we go. Look, I mentioned about the clubs there's a club directory. These are just a few of the clubs that were around in the early 80s. So many that they continued on to the next page as well. So uh, yeah, well done for all those who organised the clubs. Fantastic uh, turnout to most of these every single week and a bit of fun and uh, great times for everybody. Again, classified uh, adverts in the magazine, as you probably would expect. But on the right-hand side here, who recognises this? Telecoms. Now, of course, known as Moonraker, uh, stroke Nevada. Now, Nevadas were originally telecoms. They started out there in the late 70s. They were based in London Road uh, in Portsmouth. Uh, they had a music shop. 
which went on to become uh, Nevada Music and PMT Music, which is still going today. Um, now, in Portsmouth, it was a computer, sorry, the music shop was downstairs. The radio, CB radio shop was upstairs. There was a fantastic there, a guy called John Gordon, uh, and he was so enthusiastic about the hobby. He loved it, he breathed it, he even wrote a book on it. And uh, used to go upstairs through the music shop, go upstairs, walk into this like lowly lit little room, little showroom. But all the radios, they had radios there. They had CB radios on. And they, uh, because of the skip activity, you walked in and all you could see was all these LED lights and, and signal meters going up and down. It was amazing. Magical times. You had truckers from America. The skip was coming through. This is pre-Super Bowl. But the Americans, the skip was blasting through because the conditions were so good in the late 70s. And you just sat there in amazement and listened to all these Americans and talking about highway this and highway that and I'm pulling this load, etc. And I just wanted to get a CB radio. You could buy one, but they didn't actually transmit at the time. But they would give you a piece of paper that said if you were to uh, inadvertently open up the radio and go inside and, oh, look, there's a wire. If you resold that wire or cut this wire, it would work on transmit. But they were not legally allowed to sell a transmitter. We could just, they just sold CB receivers. And absolutely fantastic. They sold all the accessories. Ignore that thing at the top again. But the K40s, the fire sticks, the base station antennas, the sky dusters, there were antennas. Who remembers the sky duster? The star duster. They yeah, call it a star duster. Um, microphones there, base station microphones. All fantastic stuff. And, of course, they went on. They moved to bigger premises. They moved up the road to Portsmouth into towards Farlington, just outside. Big warehouse. Continued there for years, about 30-plus years. And now they've been merged with uh, Moonraker, but still trade under the Nevada name. Now, the back page of these magazines always had a lovely lady on the back. Full-color adverts. Um, some of these were fairly risky. Um, I'll show you that in, an in another video. But uh, yeah, some of these pictures were a little bit close to the mark at the time, very suggestive. And uh, that's the way they were trying to sell the uh, CB uh, evolution as such. Who remembers these? Like little um, little gun trigger type, uh, like the shooter microphones of today. Great little hand mics then. Uh, but there we go. We've got some young lady, obviously out there in America, using CB radio. Winterjoy, uh, Winterjoy, the CB people down there in Middlesex as well. So again, all around London, many, many CB radio shops. So that was CB Citizen Band magazine, April 1981. Only 60p, 60 pence. I mean, you try and buy a magazine today for under 60 pence. <laughs> you won't get one. You wouldn't even buy a leaflet for that. But I uh, hope you found that interesting. It brings back lots of memories, lots of the old adverts and things, the pictures of the equipment. If you've been into CB radio for many years, you may recall and may, may, may remember it. So, thank you very much for watching that one. I will do the other magazine you see uh, a little bit later. But uh, thanks for watching again. Please consider liking and subscribing. And have a, have a look at my other videos out there. There's something for everybody. Not just CB radio, amateur radio, scanners, antennas, masts, uh, out on the field operating up on the hilltops all the different bands there's something for everybody so again please like and subscribe it all helps the algorithm helps my channel on youtube grow big thank you to all the subscribers already um, and all the very best from enthusiastic steve <laughs>